The views and opinions expressed do not necessarily represent those of Access Fort Wayne, the Allen County Public Library, or any other supporting group. Get involved with Access Fort Wayne and make your own television programming. Call 421-1250 to find out more. of Refugee Resettlement. Uh, it's a, called a RAF grant. It stands for Refugee Agricultural Partnership Program. The partners are Heartland Communities, uh, which is the grantee, uh, Save Mommy, which owns the land, and an organization called the Workers Project uh, that looks out for workers who are not represented by unions help them make their jobs more tolerable without getting fired. Uh, the Workers Project has a, a Burmese Workers Initiative uh, that um, works with Burmese workers which are often hired by a handful of companies in this area and then treated like a private third world workforce and it's it can be really bad and they they don't have a lot of uh, help and defense so Workers Project helps with that. So I've been working in the local food space since about 2013 and um, one day I went to a Burmese Workers Initiative meeting and I said hey I'm working in local food and agriculture and if you or any of the people that you know are interested in agriculture I will help and they all kind of made it a huddle and talk to each other and then they turned and said yes we really want to be farmers we were farmers before we came here and now we're stuck in these crappy manufacturing jobs and we really would like nothing more than to be farmers again I was like, okay I'll see what I can do and so we did a couple of things we went on a tour of some greenhouses which was fun two of them were Amish one was super old-fashioned with a coal-fired heater in the greenhouse 
the other one was a state of the art uh, uh, solar power and aquaponics the greenhouse, which they were pretty excited about. Bought eighty dollars worth of fish on the spot. Oh. <laughs> and went out there and got plastic bags, <laughs> put fish flopping around. It was great. And uh, um, then the um, state refugee coordinator Matt Schomburg heard about us and what we were doing, invited us up to his office, and he said, "I think you should apply for this grant." And it's a grant that requires the state refugee coordinator to sign off on it. So uh, he's on our oversight committee, along with people from the Workers' Project and Associated Churches and various people uh, on the oversight committee. And so we applied for that grant. We got it. We're now on our second, uh, it's a three-year grant. We're now in our second version. So this is our fifth year out here at the farm. And uh, what we have is approximately 10 acres. It's divided up into just under half acre plots. Each farmer gets a plot for the season. They plant whatever they want. They're required to use uh, organic approved methods uh, and, and sprays and things. And um, we've had lots of educational opportunities. And uh, some of them have been conservation oriented. They're not really convinced on that. Uh, they really are into tilling the soil, um, but we're working on it. You see this uh, one that's all grown up in weeds, that plot has not been assigned. A uh, fellow that's been here the last four years decided at the last moment not to uh, participate, so we're working on getting somebody to do that one. So we have a bunch of equipment. Um, you can see just past the hoop house there is a wellhead sticking up. Uh, first thing we did was put in a 200 foot deep tube well. We did that because about a mile and a half up the road here, the Maumee River comes along here, takes a big sharp bend right up at the, uh, near the corner of the of the garden and goes you know, big in a, in a big loop. But right up the road here is a super fun site, really bad industrial way active super fun site, and I have no idea how the groundwater is, how big the plume is. I know it's, it extends at least to River Haven because you can see it in their water. So we were not about to irrigate an organic garden with groundwater. So we went 200 foot deep, 50,000 running feet of drip line of irrigating this with a with the deep tube well. Pretty sulfury, but the soil likes the sulfur. So, um, <laughs> and uh, we, uh, we got uh, an RCS grant for the hoop house, um, and, we're, we, and then three of our farmers also got an RCS grant for the hoop house, and so there's good, supposed to be another three uh, along, along the edge here. Soon we ran into some trouble with the building department, I won't go into that, so that's been delayed. And uh, uh, so, uh, what else can I say? There's a, a little shed up there that has the, the uh, pump works in it and the solar panel, um, uh, everything, uh, the electricity uh, for there. Um, this here is a vegetable washing station. You can kind of see from there. Uh, farmers can bring their loads of, of uh, vegetables. <coughs> On there, there's two big tanks to soak vegetables in. Uh, so they wash and cut their things in there. And then they go in the refrigerated trucks and have fuel side refrigeration. Rubbish catch. Don't throw things around, as it can and does distract the driver. 95% of accidents are driver error, so don't make it hard for him. Travelling by coach can be fun and safe, so don't let your mates say you want to be clever. The driver just wants to get you there safely. So, get on, sit down, belt, belt up. up. It can do a lot to improve the safety for you and your mates. Don't walk down the gangway when the coach is moving. If the driver was suddenly to brake, you don't want to end up next to him. It's illegal to stand next to the driver. You could distract him, block his view. If he was to stop suddenly, you could go through the windscreen. Imagine you had an accident on a rainy day like this and were phoning to your mates and killed them. Could you live with yourself knowing what you'd done? Believe me, you don't want to be in that position. So you know what to do. You guessed it. Get, Get on, on, sit down, down belt up. up.
Here. Oh. <laughs> I missed the last of it. We walk them this way. This land is your land, this land is my land From California to the New York Island From the Redwood Forest to the Gulf Stream waters This land was made for you and me As I was walking that ribbon of highway I saw above me that endless skyway I saw below me that golden valley this land was made for you and me I've roamed and rambled and I followed my footsteps to the sparkling sands of her diamond deserts and all around me a voice was sounding this land was made for you and me This land is your land This land is my land From California To the New York Island From the Redwood Forest To the Gulf Stream waters This land was made for you and me When the sun came shining I was strolling and the wheat fields waving and the dust clouds rolling and the fog was lifting a voice was chanting this land was made for you and me as I went walking I saw a sign there and on the sign it said no trespassing it didn't say nothing That side was made for you and me This land is your land This land is my land From California To the New York Island From the Redwood Forest To the Gulf Stream waters This land was made for you and me the shadow of the steeple, I saw my people by the relief office. I've seen my people as they stood there hungry. I stood there asking, Is this land made for you and me? Nobody living can ever stop me as I go walking. Freedom Highway Nobody living Can ever make me turn back This land was made for you and me This land is your land This land is my land From California To the New York Island From the Redwood Forest To the Gulf Stream Wall this land was made for you and me This land is your land This land is my land From California to the New York Island From the Redwood Forest to the Gulf
Gulf Stream waters, this land was made for you and me. This land was made for you and me. I can't believe how bad this storm is. I know, this is the loudest thunder I've ever heard. Okay, I'm gonna get ready now. I'll see you soon. Bye. It's a young one with a quick fuse. I was uptight, wanna let loose. I was dreaming of bigger things and wanna leave my old life behind. Not a yes sir, not a follower. Fit the box, fit the mold, have a seat in the foyer. Take a number, I was lightning before the thunder Uh, birds, 
Uh, I have more birds in that stuff than anything I've ever seen. The red-winged blackbirds, I had so many this year. You know, they were almost almost extinct. They were endangered, and now they're coming back again. And uh, the swallows follow me, or they circle around me in the field, the butterflies, and you name it, they're all there. I had a duck, a duck plant ground up and, and eating in the field with them. So we just have a couple of minutes for me to get on the road to our next stop. Um, you know, Mike, this is Mike's awesome house here that he yeah. is restoring. So this is his family farm. He's not just a um, production farmer, but this is a homestead. Mike has some chickens out back that he produces. Um, he has the bees. He has uh, the butcher shed over there. We do our so own work processing. This is, this is a true homestead, um, and I'm really excited to see this come along. This is just awesome, Mike. You have a beautiful place here. <laughs> great, great grandfather settled here in 1847, and that house, the brick farm, was built in 1916. Wow. And we're probably putting more money in that yeah. than we would in a whole new house. Yeah. But there wasn't a choice there. You know, it wasn't an option for us. We're yeah. going gonna to pick that up again. The big problem is electricity, um, heating, air conditioning, and in uh, insulation. We're going to put insulation in the walls, <laughs> which is hard to do. It costs a lot of money. So I have some baby chicks back here. You guys interested? You, you got time yet? We got about seven minutes. Okay, let's just let's, let's take a little walk. So that's the new breed. I'm sorry. The darker color ones will be my layers. Uh, they're going to be. Uh, mm -hmm. My, my three and four year olds could come in here and just grab these. Um, they, they, if you let them set on their feet and put one hand over the top, then they're happy. So they're getting their, their flight feathers ready. Um, Ooh. And yeah, so yeah, we'll just stand and have it like that. So my, my four-year-old grandson, he's, he's grown up with these. He taught Charlie, the three-year-old, how to catch them. So he says, and, and they get him over in the corner, and he says, get the one in the back or in the very corner. So he can't get away. And then you just go fast. <laughs> Sweet. That and, sounds about right. And that's what they were doing. <laughs> they were doing. They that. So, so we'll put, we'll, these will be for meat. That's a meat bird, and the, the red one, wherever he got to it. So that'll be a new layer. Oh, nice. okay. They're wandering around. So, so they, they, in the wintertime, they, they'll be in here. In the summertime, they're out in the back in tractors and sheds that I move every day. So they're on pasture. Oh, nice. So, yeah, and I move them daily. Uh, right now I have eight layers back there, so I'm getting uh, two to four eggs a day. Uh, they're just too old. And, but broilers and the eggs are com so completely different when they're on pasture. Yeah. <laughs> no, broilers, they, well, they will if you keep them long enough, but uh, no, I'll butcher them. Uh, these, these will take about uh, 12 weeks to get big, the broilers. Uh, a Cornish cross, which you're buying in the store, are five weeks old. They're, they're fed. They're you know they don't move. They'll, I, they I say they sleep with their head in the feeder. Where these guys are what a to me what a, a chicken should taste like, what poultry should, what chicken should be. There's a completely different flavor to it. They don't have a big giant breast on it that are flabby and no flavor. These are smaller, but they have flavor and they have texture to them. I I have I did I have sold them over the years. With all my stuff going on, I'm just eating these. Oh, okay. So you're, so you're I, and so they were non-GMO. I feed them non-GMO and on the pasture. And uh, lucky family. The, that's, yeah. nice. that's the way to eat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's what we do. So what are the breeds? I don't know. This one, um, that's a, a new breed. I've never tried that. And it's a cross. I like Freedom Rangers because they stand the pasture and they're more. They're a, an old French breed or two French breeds cross. This is a. Sasso, Sasso. It's a new one. I've never had it. It's going to take me another week to get it to to butcher weight, but uh, I'll see what it does. Mm -hmm. um, the red ones are. I just forgot there. 
They're not Red Rangers. Uh, <laughs> just like just forgot the breed on that one. <laughs> and I've never had them either before, but I, I, I watch what kind of breed I get, and I like that. The, the ladies at the hatchery, they said, you should try this one. Anybody want to hold them? I'm going to put her down. Yep, the same. Let's go. All right, guys, <laughs> we've got to get back on the bus. We have one Beginning with the 2018-2019 school year, all LTISD school buses will be equipped with seatbelts. It is important for seatbelts to be worn correctly so that all students are safe while riding the bus. Let's show you how. First click, then tug and snug. That's right, just click, tug, and snug. Great job! Make sure to stay buckled in for the entire ride. In an event of a crash, wearing your seatbelt may prevent serious injury and can even save your life. Remember, as soon as you board the bus, make sure to click, tug, and snug. Safety first!
used to be like three five during the summer. You know, we're usually like five to ten during the, you know spring and fall, but it's really low. It's like, um, like I said, and, and, and the, I don't say it's just from us getting a million dollars, you know, um, but it, as soon as that hit, right? I mean, we had ten volunteers to say, hey, we're going to go work with this this other organization, this other organization. But most people don't understand when you, you know when you get a grant from Indiana Department of Health or any other entity. Um, it, it, it's very specific, you know what I'm saying? You know, our, the, we can do, we can buy food and we can administrate. That is, I, 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 can't, I can't have any training sessions. I can have seminars, which is, you know, it's similar, but it's just so much different. You have to figure out how you can just do your job. You can do it effectively, efficiently, and, you know, then seek out other grants for other, for other organizations. Um, and um, right now, infrastructure grants, they're really not out there um, because a lot of people are holding their funds from that inflationary times, even the non for profits You know, they went from giving out millions of dollars every year to a few hundred thousand here and there, you know, but we're going to keep going. If, you, if anyone wants to volunteer any day of the week, just let us know. Um, but on our other locations, um, we actually pay people. Um, because um, the hunger relief with the non for profit, when you start paying people, it, 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 it's weird to, it's another uphill battle paying people in a non for profit. Um, so you can do it, don't get me wrong, but then you have to, to you have to do what is it, W 9s and W 4s, and then you have to you know, pay your accountant to do something else. Um, so what we what we did is we, we separate everything. You know, our for profit stuff, um, we pay people, you know, our non for profit, um, you know, because even though we have administrative funds for that grant, we don't have administrative funds to assist with the fifth law. So you have to keep that separate because if you use this fund for that, then another reason that they'll try to come out. So um, anything I else? Are you going with us to lunch? Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, 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 yeah. We'll bug you there then. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to beat you there. I'm going to pick up Zayon. I'm going to beat you there. there. Right? Your food is already hey. ready. Uh, it's already ready. Right? This is awesome. 20 20. This is fantastic. Yay! Yeah. Really good. Powerful work. So the chicken is, aren't mine, unfortunately. Uh, but they are from a local farm. Um, well, not local. He's like moving to. But um, the greens are from our, I hope our, 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 come out um, our greenhouse. I think so. um, mm -hmm. The cornbread is, I don't make cornbread. So, and then the macaroni <laughs> cheese is it's homemade. It's not box. So, so Beautiful. All right. I got Thanks. you all. And then drinks. And then enjoy. Thank you all. If you have any questions, Human Agriculture Cooperative, Mr. Smiley is Smiley Garden Angel. Um, but he's also my assistant. Um, um, for uh, the, the LFPA grant, um, so um, we tell people we reward people from within. Um, our youth farmers, um, we have a youth farming program. Our youth farmers, three of them, are now working for ag businesses, um, making thirty to fifty thousand dollars, nineteen twenty dollars. You know, nineteen twenty years old. Um, we feel once they get more of their certifications, we think they're going to be. We know for a fact they're going to be the next the next leaders and that's what we're trying to do we're trying to build them up um, to, so they can be take over the food system mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. and we can hey the soil and water okay our soil is clay indiana we probably have we probably have like two acres of, of, of maybe a maybe not a fine loam right you know maybe right but what we're doing with regenerative is you know i'm doing more of the fabric right we do the cover crops, right? Um, we do rotation, right? And then we do. Um, Enough of um, that. Uh, mm -hmm. Season. So, for example, like that one right there, that plot right there, we do, we do um, purple whole pea, which is an African heritage pea. Um, that the Africans brought over in their hair and, and, and to, to plant when they came over as slaves. Um, we, we plant that. We only plant it one time. You can do you can do you can do purple oak pea twice a year, but we only do it once a year because it's very nutri it, it's nitrogen uh, rich and it takes a lot of nitrogen out. 
So we'll grow one time a year on a, on a plot and then don't grow anything else. Um, other stuff, um, like our tail, um, our collars and stuff, we'll grow three or four times a year. Because um, uh, even though um, they, there's a 45 to 60 day window, right? Um, we start early. We start because they can take a frost. We start early inside. We can get them outside early. And then we can go to the almost, well, we all know that winter hasn't been winter. Winter is um, like, so we can go all the way. We went this year, last year we went all the way to like Christmas, you know. And, and, and right? even though it was a frost out here, we, they are still going. And then in our high tunnel, um, I mean, we, we're working on a, uh, a heating system, a natural heating system. Um, we grew grains until, I want to say, January. So, that yeah, extra month. Yeah. Hey, hey, there he is right there. Well, thank I'm you. Done. Time. Yeah, thank, thank you. I appreciate y'all. I'll see y'all over. Yeah. You're there? Yep, I'm going right there. Yeah, cool. Yeah. <laughs> From all of us at Parkview Health. Sending warm wishes for a happy, healthy holiday season.
the Wabi Watershed Alliance has a conservation technical assistance grant with Natural Resources Conservation Service. So part of that grant has deliverables, and one of the things that we wanted to showcase was the community from the town taking them to the country and from the country taking them to the town to see that the impact of what we're having on water quality. So a lot of our property here in Allen County um, flows into the Western Lake Erie Basin. So the Maumee Watershed Alliance was established in 2013 under the name of Tri-State Watershed Alliance. And the focus of that group was to bring together partnering watershed organizations to help mitigate the nutrient loading that's going into the Western Lake Erie Basin that's causing algal blooms and those high nutrient levels which is disrupting the whole ecosystem and ultimately affecting 12 million people in the water coming out of the area. I'm sure some of you have probably heard about the whole crisis in Toledo when they had no drinking water. That's because of those algal blooms. Those algal blooms are coming from nutrients that are coming off of our farm fields, our water from construction and going into our drainage. So the Lobby Water Alliance Form as tri state to kind of help bring knowledge to our everyday citizens, to our producers, to our retailers, um, and hopefully come up with some plans to help mitigate that so we all have access to that water. And through the conservation plan, we're able to do things like this. We do a trip in the partnership of soil and water. Um, we're going to go up to Lake Erie, we'll go to Putnam Bay. Okay, I'm 
going to get ready now. I'll see you soon. Bye. It's a young one with a quick fuse. I was up tight, want to let loose. I was dreaming of bigger things and want to leave my old life behind. Not a yes sir, not a follower. Pick the box, fit the mold, have a seat in the foyer. Take a number. I was lightning before the thunder.
Please subscribe to my YouTube, Blue Money Army. 